Hello, hello, and welcome to Starbase Summary, September 11th to 13th, 2025. I'm Jack Beyer. I'm filling in for the guy that's normally here who's on a plane right now off to do some cool stuff. But uh, yeah, if you haven't been keeping track, this launch mount has already been boosted. They static fired the booster and lifted it off and got it back to the production site. And now it's time to ship it. That is, modify it to support static fire of Ship 38, which will hopefully be this week, and Flight 11 will be very soon. I mean, Flight 11 could be right around the corner. There you see the chopsticks up at the top of the tower. Both the chopsticks and the QD arm, I think, got a little bit of work out this week. Oh, wow. Really beautiful shot of a rainbow right there lined up with the end of the... The end of the rainbow lined up with the tower. Absolutely beautiful. Got some apartment building construction. Great low-light imagery from Caesar there with his Sony camera. A nice fast lens. Really, this is like what your eyes would approximately see at, at about this time of night or twilight, whatever you want to call it, blue hour, I guess. Um, but that's what the, what the office building really does look like. It's kind of cool that we, despite all the walls and everything going up in Starbase over the years, still get the views inside of things from time to time, given all the windows. Speaking of windows, here we go. We got, what is this? This guy's winching something? Oh, no, I didn't look at the label. Now I know, now I know how DOS feels. <laughs> uh, let's see, he's winching something up in the nose cone production line area. There's been some weird stuff showing up there lately, which maybe we'll get to a little bit later in the video. Looks like he's lifting a strut, some sort of hydraulic actuator, into place onto that stand there. Is that that weird ship QD arm potentially related thing? I don't even know what that thing is. They were building it in Sanchez and then they moved it into the Star Factory. It's been there for, it feels a couple months. Possible booster V3 aft section. Now, we don't know if this is a bona fide booster V3 aft section or if it's just a part of a test article. So don't get excited just yet that we're seeing uh, booster 18's aft, but there you go. The old can crusher moved into Mega Bay 1 there. It's going to be uh, used, I think, for testing uh, the 18.3 prototype, question mark? I've been running around all week along with Doss and D over at McGregor, so I'm a little bit behind on some of the news. Forgive me if I get some of this stuff wrong. You know how it is. We're doing it in one take. We're doing it live! So is SpaceX. SpaceX is doing it live. Like, they have wasted no time between Flight 10 and preparing, preparing for Flight 11. Uh, looks like they're moving this scrap barrel over through the ring yard, probably take it over to Sanchez and uh, scrap it. Looks like they took some, some coupons out of it, I believe they're called. You can see those little cutouts along the weld. They'll, they'll weld like a dev barrel kind of situation and then cut those little coupons out and then test them in various ways. Test the weld, make sure it worked as expected. This is a cool shot. You can see uh, the uh, X on the office building and all the tiny homes. Oh, I didn't even read the label. I did, yeah, okay, read the label, Jack. Pad 2 locks BQD extended. That is cool. Starting to see Pad 2 come alive is really exciting because, again, it's going to be required for Block 3 Starship. So they better... Oh, in, out, in, out. You see that? It was like a frame by frame. They better uh, be working fast to get that thing ready for Block 3 if they want Block 3 to fly before the end of the year. So they are. Ideally, everything lines up and we get to see Block 3 fly soon, if not the end of this year, early next year. There's some more of that testing of the LOX BQD or the BQD carriage, whatever the appropriate name for it is. A lot of time we don't know what the actual names are unless we see it on a label on the thing. And so we just have to call it what is the most sensible thing to call it. Okay, yeah, now we move on to a brief interlude from SpaceX's engine testing facility in McGregor, Texas. Got a chance to fly the drone a little bit. Of course, outside of the TFR and abiding by all rules and regulations, I'm a certified drone pilot. It's no big deal. You just got to be safe and careful. And also, side note, this, the area we flew from is a non-public location, so it's not like anybody can just go there and fly. Um, we, we dot our T's and cross our I's here. Uh, but wait. Reverse that. We got a lot of cool stuff happening in McGregor. I mean, SpaceX obviously is uh, needing to test a lot of Merlins in support of Falcon 9. I mean, a lot of the time we talk about Raptor tests at McGregor in the context of talking about this facility and talking about Starship, but Falcon 9 is still the workhorse. So a lot of testing needs to happen in support of that. Here you can see a Merlin sea level firing. 
again from the drone outside of the TFR. Uh, it's a Mavic 4 Pro. A lot of people are asking, you know, hey, Jack, what do you fly? I recently got the Mavic 4 Pro. I am a fan, uh, not sponsored, obviously, but the zoom on the, on the camera is, is wild. And then, of course, you're shooting 4K, so you can do a digital crop on that as well. And it can get kind of mushy. You'll see a couple shots, maybe. I don't know which ones Thomas used in the edit. Thanks, Thomas. Um, yeah, like that's kind of mushy. But hey, what is this thing? What on earth is this thing? And is it perhaps going to be used to test something that SpaceX wants to test for off Earth? I'm really excited to see what that giant scaffolding thing is. I mean, it's huge. It's absolutely massive. Here you can see, again, in support of Falcon 9 Ops, the second stage rolling out of the hangar there and over to the second stage test stand to be static fired. So we were there, D, uh, Das, and myself were there for two days, and we saw this second stage here that you see breaking over and being put onto that flatbed. We saw that static fired on Thursday, and then this was shot on Friday, and we saw, you know, they moved one second stage out, they broke it over, they put it on the trailer, they moved the other second stage in, put it on the stand, and sure enough, static fired it right at the end of the day as well. So then they moved this one, the first one we saw static fired the day before, back to the hangar, and they're just wasting absolutely no time with these second stages. Why are they static firing all these second stages? I guess static fire is probably not the, is that the right word? I don't know. Beautiful sunset test, by the way. Well, they throw this part of the rocket away every time. I mean, this is like the whole raison d'etre, or however you're supposed to say that of Starship, right? Oh, look, T-Tab. The green from the T-Tab is, is really cool. It's not happening yet, but it will. But yeah, Starship is chasing the dream of a reusable upper stage, and SpaceX with Falcon 9 really has to crank out those second stages because they don't get them back. And sure enough, we were there for two days, and we saw two Falcon 9 second stages tested. Pretty cool. Also got to see two Raptor tests. Uh, I was not flying for either of those, unfortunately, but uh, those were really cool to see. You can see some of those raptor stands right there in the foreground as we do a lovely little pan of the entire McGregor facility. There's the raptor vertical north and south, and there's also the raptor horizontal over there. If you are wondering what I'm all talking about, maybe you should hang out in McGregor Live. It's one of our 24-7 live streams. You know, we don't just have Starbase Live. We also have Space Coast Live, and we also have McGregor Live. And if you want to catch up on all the intricacies of McGregor, because there's a lot of them, just like Starbase and just like the Cape, then, you know, you can go hang out and with the regulars in Starbase Live. Oh my god, I, I blew it. In McGregor Live, uh, that's, you know, something I like to tell a lot of people about, because it's a cool place and a cool stream, and heck, I don't even know half the intricacies of McGregor. Um, and being there in person and shooting it in person like that was really a treat, because I got to learn some of them, and, uh, you know, if that interests you, check it out. Hey, look, it's Pad 2. It's, it's uh, stuff uh, happening at Pad 2. I didn't read the label. Possible V3 booster aft section once again. We, again, we don't know if that's a uh, test tank or an actual, like, what's going to be installed on booster 18 over in Mega Bay 1. Now, this one is weird. This is a weirdo one. I have no idea what this is. Maybe something related to the booster landing tank, just based on its diameter. You can see something welded to the side there. It looks like they're going to attach a hydraulic actuator and push and pull on it, probably with cryogens in it. It's got like a valve assembly at the top. Um, maybe it's upside down from our perspective and it's going to be get broken over at some point. I have no idea. Uh, I, I assume it's some sort of booster uh, internal tankage sort of, sort of deal. But would love to know more. Can't wait till we see this thing outside of the Star Factory. Maybe we'll be able to get some shots of a label or, you know, some Sharpie written on it or what have you. That would be helpful. New Pad 2 Deluge Water Tank. Oh boy, is this the one that, uh, that backed up the traffic in town? I think it is. This, this was driven an interesting route. I'd love to talk to uh, like a heavy lift or a, a, you know oversized load hauling company and, and understand why exactly this tank took the route it did into Starbase. Because I think it came off Highway 69 and then came down Highway 4. And it, so I think Caesar and Gage were both stuck behind it for a bunch of a bunch of hours, and uh, Das and I were worried about getting stuck behind it on our way back from McGregor too. So interesting that they didn't go maybe like through the port somehow, and then like port connector. I don't know. I am not an expert with oversized loads, so I'm sure there's a reason for it, and I would love to know. Bunch of work on Pad 2's chopstick stabilizers. These are like the additional points of contact that 
sort of grab onto and allow fine adjustment of the booster in multiple directions during a lift. Also a ship, I suppose, I should say. <laughs> Vehicles, nice and, and vague, or broad, I should say. Specific, but broad. Um, look, a coyote, Oh, eating some stuff. I wonder if he's eating a crab. We've been getting some rain lately, and it's like crab season. You'll uh, be driving down the beach or down the side of the road at night, and you'll just see them all scuttling away. It's adorable. Anyway, Coyote getting some food. That's good. Also, what's good is SpaceX keeping up the cadence by firing these second stages. The host says John Galloway. I'm not John Galloway. I don't think we're going to bother editing that. We don't really need to do that. Uh, I'm Jack Byer. I think I already said that. Anyways, this is the end. Thanks for watching Starbase Summary.